this. If you're asked what some of these limits are that are here, um, the first thing is to understand what it's asking and then being able to figure it out. The limit as you approach one from the positive side, the limit as you approach one from the negative side, and just the limit at one. There's a picture here. This is slightly better than the picture you have, but I think this is the best way of seeing what's going on. When you're talking about the X value one here, as you approach from the right side, from the positive side, this thing is heading for zero, right? It doesn't matter that it's actually defined to be two. It looks like it's heading for zero. So that's what this limit is. This is zero. Whereas if you're, if you're coming from the other side here, the negative side of one, it looks like it's heading for two. I mean, it is two, but that when you're asking for the limits, you don't care what it is at the point. You care what it is looks, looking like it's heading for. That's two. These are different. Since they're different, from one side it looks like two. From one side it looks like zero. The limit, just the, just the limit as you approach one, does not exist. No, well, it's not. Everybody knows you mean. I For some reason, they always say it does not exist, but... It's, it's fine, but you could teach yourself to write does not exist, probably. If you, again, um, the other ones as, as well here, like this, how does, a, how does this function behave as you approach zero? Um, zero is not one of these values as x approaches zero. It's not one of those values that jumps like the other one did. As you approach from the right side, looks like it's heading for two. As you approach from the left side, it looks like it's heading for two. In fact, it is two. But since the behavior as you come from either side is the same, and it looks like it's heading for two, this is two. All right? If you're looking at now what's happening at two from the right, the left, and just in general, the two-sided limit, as you're approaching two right here, this x value, oops, um, from this side, it's going to negative one. It's It looks like it's negative one. It's negative one the whole time there. It looks like it's negative one. But from this side, it looks like it's heading for one, right? So those are different as well, right? This is this is negative one. This was positive one. So then this was, it just doesn't exist, right? Doesn't exist. There is no There is no two-sided limit there, right? You can't say that there is a limit. And uh, one of the other ones here. I know it looks a little weird with negative one plus. Negative one from the positive side. Negative one from the positive side. If you if you come from over here, this looks like it's heading for two. This is going up to one. Okay. It doesn't matter how the function is actually defined there. It matters what's happening with the function on that side. So that's a one. The other ones on the other side here, similar stuff, right? And then the last thing here, this thing here, is just to compare what the function is actually defined at, as at that point and what the limit is as you approach that x value. Because these don't necessarily have to be the same. As you approach negative 1 from one side or the other here, what does it look like the function is behaving? How is the function behaving? What value does it look like it's headed for? You come from this way and you come from this way, what does it look like it's headed for? I know it's not a very nice looking graph, but it looks like it's headed for one, right? That's the that's the y value. From either side, from this side it looks like it's headed for one, from this side it looks like it's headed for one. The limit as you approach negative one of that is one. But the actual function value is 2, right? Later on, we're going to see that this is a way of looking at whether the, whether the, um, the function is <coughs> continuous at that point or not. Okay, This function is actually not continuous at that point. It suddenly jumps up to here, and it suddenly jumps back down again. It's not continuous at that point because the limit as you get close isn't the same as the actual value. Okay, so that's later on in this unit.
There's probably more than we need here to be able to do it, but you can you can write some of those out after for yourself. <coughs> Even a piecewise defined function, if you write, if you uh, if you draw a graph of that, or even if you just think about it, what's happening at two? What's happening from the left and the right? Or is there a limit as you you know write at the value itself? I'll let you draw a graph of that for yourself after. But that's I, I like I think we've probably talked about what limits are enough by this point, right? We're on part I don't know what eight of this of this section, but. The last thing in here is not anything that's very important other than it's a function you can easily put in your calculator that has sort of some jumps in it like that, the greatest integer function. There's a function in your calculator that says int x. All it does is it tells you the, the greatest integer to the left or you know the greatest integer that is less than the value you're looking at. The greatest integer of 2.3 is 2. That's that's the integer part of it, right? The greatest integer of 2.9 is 2. The greatest integer uh, function of 3 is 3, right? Because it's made it to 3. If you have a graph of this thing, it looks like this. Uh, as soon as you get to 1, the greatest integer is 1. And then it stays 1 right until you get to 2. And then it jumps up to three as soon as you, or as soon as you sorry it's two and then as soon as you get up to three it jumps up to three so it looks like steps like that on the other side the same thing here okay this is what this greatest integer function looks like if you ask what is the greatest integer in negative one point two it's negative two it's the greatest integer to the left of it. It's basically rounding it down to the lower integer, to the integer below it, even if it's 2.9. So it's not rounding, but it's chopping off that part. The, sending negative 1.2 down to negative 2, right? Negative 4, a 0. The only reason I'm showing you this is so that we can talk about limits for that. Okay, there's nothing exciting or important about this greatest integer function. If you ask what the limit as you approach 0.6 is of that function, as you approach 0 0.6, 0 0.6 is right, right here, right? As you approach from either side, what happens there? Does that limit exist? And if so, what is it? It does, right? If that's 0 0.6, uh, what's the greatest integer in 0 0.6? 0, right? That one exists because it's the same from the left and the right. Greatest integer, in, as you approach 1.5, as you approach here from either side, it's 1. The limit of this function as you approach negative 1.4, well, here's negative 1.4, negative 2. But if you pick one of the values that's right on the boundary here, like if you pick one and you're asking what's the what's the limit as you approach one, one's right here. If you approach from the left and the right, it's different. As you, if you approach from the right, what's the limit of that function? As you're as you're here and you're moving along there, what is it? What does it look like the value should be? What is the value as you're coming from the right here? One, right? So the limit as you approach from the right is one. But if you approach from the left, so if you take this down here, you approach from the left, what does it look like it should be? Zero, right? As from the left, this is zero. Since this and this are different, since the right and the left are different, this is does not exist. I don't know if we want to use that abbreviation, but... <clears throat> This section, the main thing here has been about introducing you to the idea of what a limit is, to the concept of what a limit is. Again, this greatest integer function is nothing interesting other than it's a function. It is on your calculator if you want to graph it or if you want to look at it or use it. 
Um, it is under one of the, if you push the math button, math, I think it's under num for number operations. If you put that and then x, if you put, sorry, I was going to graph it, but if you put 2.8, you know, it gives you 2. It just takes the integer to the lo lower side of it. If you graph it, it's going to look funny on this calculator because it tries to connect it. But just realize it's not it's not supposed to be all connected if you're actually trying to graph this thing. See how it tries to join them up? It's This calculator tries to join the things, but it's only the horizontal lines that actually are there. I think some of the TI-84s graph it without those. Is there any questions in general about limits? When you do some of the, you know, you can finish some of these for yourself and think about it, but when you do some of the stuff out of the textbook and work on it, I think you'll uh, strengthen your understanding of things here.